the question comes in what how does contact really help you right um contact helps us by uh, telling us if we are in close proximity tissue but what are the limitations the limitations are whether you're using you know an optical mechanism or a spring mechanism sometimes during longer procedures uh, you will uh, you think that you're touching the tissue but you're not actually touching the tissue so i think the gold standard for me personally that i'm touching the tissue is ice and electrograms um so which which this catheter gives me um, a a really really good idea of when i'm touching the tissue the other problem uh, i shouldn't say problem the other limitation that i have with with the contact uh, catheter is um you know the determination of contact forces is in on an average uh, over a period of 30 seconds to a minute so if the heart is moving um if you may be touching simultaneously for a short period of time but not during the whole ablation but the catheter will still show you that you're touching for the whole ablation and and that can throw you off a little bit so your catheter i don't know if you can see my hand your catheter may be doing this but your system will tell you that you're touching at all times on a temperature based ablation like diamond tam the the recording of these temperatures are in milliseconds so we they're cycling this temperature calculation about um 20 times in a second so it's in, instantaneous so if your temperature is 50 and it drops to 48 45 you know you're not creating a stable lesion and in that time you have to do make some adjustments by by advancing your sheet or whatever to get that stability so that helps me the second thing is uh you know uh, there are limitations at this time to do high power short duration ablation lesions with the standard contact force catheter and those limitations are there is no there is no feedback mechanism in place so if you're at high power short duration with a lot of force in a thin tissue uh you know ablating at 5 seconds versus ablating at 8 seconds we don't know how deep a lesion could go to either cause a steam pop or 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 uh, or pericardial effusion as a matter of fact or esophageal damage um and then we also cannot predict char formation in the proximal ring electrode here the system protects you so just in case you have too much force or you wedged into a narrow tissue and your temperatures are rising very quickly in the tissue okay this is a surrogate of temperature in the tissue that's all what we care about that pass system will dial it down so it gives you a little bit of margin of error that that you can live with so the chances of steam pop with this catheter are low the chances of char formation is low uh, are you touching the tissue that confidence you just have to change gears a little bit rather than relying on a number you actually are looking at a tissue and electrogram on ice does that answer your question so can i do the same thing with contact force the answer is some of the things i can do which is looking touching the tissue but i cannot predict at what point should i come off ablation in a high power short duration case should i come off at 5 seconds should i come off at 8 seconds if i go to 8 seconds my heart rate goes up because i don't know what's happening in the tissue and when a steam pop is going to happen so that that is the confidence i get with this 